You've probably seen his pictures going around. Hoyt was posting them. What's hey, up, dude? What's up, guys? Uh, most of the whitetail pages on Facebook. Oh my god. Everybody was posting it because of this deer. And the caliber size of this deer is, is unreal and unmatched. And it's something that you'd be lucky to ever see in your life, let alone have an opportunity to hunt and kill. What's up guys? Today we have something very special for you. If you live around Columbus or just hunt big deer at all in the entire world, you probably have heard of this guy. Kyle Chaney. Kyle freaking Chaney. He is an absolute beast. He kills big deer every year. Year after year after year after year. You've probably seen his pictures going around. Hoyt was posting them. Uh, most of the whitetail pages on Facebook, on Instagram, everything like that. Everybody was posting it because of this deer and something that you'd be lucky to ever see in your life, let alone have an opportunity to hunt and kill. We'll have all his socials linked below, um, all of his racing pages, everything like that. Let's get into it. Let's go meet him. What's hey, up, dude? What's up, guys? Welcome to my house. What's up, man? Come in. What do you have to show us? So, this right here. Um, I race this in the Champ Series. It's uh, like a motocross trophy truck. For those of you that don't know what Pro 4 is, like we race this truck on uh, like closed course tracks. So, this what is it cost? Like two grand? Huh? Two grand? Yeah, you can probably get one and the one for like 1500 bucks. You know? Perfect. Now, this is my RV bay. This is where I keep the rig that pulls all the race cars, and this is actually my. Uh, Can Am X3 Champ car. This is my short course car uh, from this year. Check this bed grow out. Yeah, I wanted a uh, a garage big enough um, where I could pull my RV in in the winter because we race during the winter too, um, and not have to winterize it. And that way, I could just come in and out as I please without having to winterize it. Thinking ahead. Yeah, That's thinking awesome. Ahead. This is the car I'm building for a customer. Uh, it's a brand new build. I also build cars for guys that uh, that want race cars. So um, CT Racehorse built the cage, and then I'm just uh, putting everything together. Same with this car. This is uh, another car I'm building for a guy. Um, we just got that powdered, and then this was a car I raced at King of Hammers. You wouldn't know that small tires on it, but this was my King of Hammers car from 2020. At first, I thought those were subwoofers. I was like, "What do you need oh. those for?" He's <laughs> pumping here in the race. Here you got my. My bicycle, that's how I stay in shape. I like to mountain bike and then all some of my hunting stuff, some bows, point bows, and little tree stands. Which one's your favorite? Uh, my RX4, for sure. I love my RX4, but. But it's Hoyt, so they're all good. Types. Yeah, they're all good, I mean. But my RX4 is uh, a kill machine. One of these is not like the other. Yeah, one of these has seen um, the inside of a deer, if you can't tell. Well, they probably all have. <laughs> this is, now you're gonna go into the house. This is where he said, "Take your shoes off right now." I do laundry now. Not very good at it. <laughs> hey, can you ever be good at laundry? Wait, holy grail! Are we at the wrong house? I guess we'll start here. This was my deer from this year. This is the deer that I was telling you guys about. That. We've seen smaller deer on high fences. Um, <laughs> yeah. The deer that has been going around on social media, Hoyt's posting it, just about every Facebook page, this Instagram is, page is just posting it. This is Ed. Um, this is a deer that um, it's kind of been like a ghost to me, really. Uh, didn't get many truck camera pictures of him. Uh, I have his sheds from two years ago. Um, he's probably, we think he was a five and a half year old deer like this, so. Uh, just a complete stud, but was always a ghost until this year. What did, you just got your score today, actually. What, he, what was this? Yeah, um, Buckmaster scored him today. Uh, 
just this side alone scored 115 inches. Um, the side was like 51, and then he had a 22 inch inside spread. He scored a 189 even, pretty to, sure. Sorry. Put that perspective, guys. If his mat, he was hurt. So there, there's a whole lot of story. Um, he's putting a video together his own, actually. This was 115. If he had a matching set of 115 with a 22 inch high spread, that gives you a 252 inch deer. That's something that, I mean, 189 inch deer, I'm not gonna take away from because that's an insane deer as it is, but 115 inch side is unreal. Yeah, and it, it's crazy that this is my second biggest kill ever. Um, cell tower, the deer I shot two years ago would have been, but um, he broke a tine off during rut. So he would, he's not, but this is, this is currently my second biggest deer. Talk about a tragedy. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> so, and then you got these, these are just kind of like deer from uh, when I first started hunting when I was 15. Um, this, these are my first deer, uh, is, um, oh, right here, this is my first deer ever. Um, bad, yeah, and uh, so they're all bow kills. I've always uh, hunted with a bow. I've just loved bow hunting uh, since That's we started. Old metal tags. Yeah, old, old awesome. metal tag. Yeah, I don't even know. This is like, so I was 15. So I don't want to give you guys my age, but I'm old. <laughs> but it was a long time ago. So I mean, these are all from Ohio too, and you only get one deer a year, so you can kind of, well, uh, you can kind of see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but yeah, so these were all just kind of like growing up just shooting deer and you know I didn't when I was younger I didn't really have like a, I wanted to shoot nice deer I didn't you know I always let like spikes walk and stuff but um, I didn't have like the drive to shoot like monster deer I just wanted a, a, a nice buck and uh, you know I, I think you know with social media and stuff it almost like it drives you to, to shoot bigger deer because you see bigger deer because you see bigger deer and this deer I shot I think it was 2014 um, and this, this deer is kind of like what changed my mentality. I shot that deer first day of season. Um, you know, I put in a lot of work, like trail cameras were just kind of coming out and getting, well, they were out before that, but I just started using them and, you know, utilizing trail cameras. And, uh, I said, it took me, I, I killed on my first sit. So after that, I'm like, I sat that year, you know, without hunting the rest of the year. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, I want to still be in a tree and I want bigger deer. Like I ended up going out like and shooting some does and like I ended up going scouting for some bigger deer that year and found bigger deer that year. I'm like, okay, this is what I need to do for the future. Like I want, I want to shoot big mature animals. Like I want, I want the chase. Like it was almost too easy. Um, and this deer was probably three and a half or four and a half, not real sure. Um, but you can tell by his coat, he was definitely an early season deer. But you'd say this is a deer that kind of kind of shifted who you were. You weren't just a casual hunter anymore. You were kind of like, yeah. you took it to like a whole new level. Yeah, I mean, I'm super proud of this deer. I mean, you can still see, he's still got some velvet left on him. He was, I shot him so early, but you know, a after seeing this deer and realizing probably what he could have been in another year or two, uh, it, uh, it really changed my outlook on, on shooting, um, shooting younger deer. 100%. Well, the guys, thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> no, this is why you guys clicked on the video. So, I did shoot this one. Well, as you can see, it's got a, a metal tag on it. So I did shoot this one in 07. So this was, you know, a, a, a big gear I shot. You know, I got lucky. You know, I didn't really put in the work, you know, like I should have and, and got lucky and shot a big deer. Um, but, you know, since then, you know, we've put in the work and, and pretty much got a, got the deer I've been going after every year. So, um, you know, now I target one deer, um, one deer only that year. And if he gets, I've been lucky enough that my target deer that I've been hunting has not gotten shot that year. So um, I've actually got my target buck every year um, that I've started targeting deer. And once I started targeting deer, um, my success rate went way up too. So um, I feel like if you can try to hone in on one deer, um, instead of trying to chase multiple deer, then you'll have way more luck, you know, targeting on one deer. And this was actually my target last year. Um, this is a deer I called YG. Uh, I had pictures of him for three years. Um, I didn't hunt him the first two years because I thought, I wasn't real sure how old he was. Um, I thought he could grow into something more, but he kind of stayed the same between that 
five and a half and six and a half year old range. Like he, uh, he split his brow every two years, um, but he kind of stayed the same size. He might've put on a couple inches from last year. I don't know, cause I don't have his sheds, but um, I figured he was kind of aged out and he was probably close to his max. So he was my target deer and I had to wait all year on him. Like I didn't get any trail camera pictures of him early season. I knew he was still alive from uh, hearing other people talk about him and having trail camera pictures of him. but. He only showed up on my spot late season, like right after rut, he would show up. And that's exactly what he did uh, last year. He showed up right after rut. I got a picture of him at midnight. I went in there and hunted him the next day and killed him the next day. Uh, but like I said, I hunted all year for him. Even though he wasn't there, I was still in there. On, bat, on good winds, I would hunt it just in case he did show up. Because if he did and he showed up during day, I wanted to be there. Because usually a, an old deer like that, you only get a couple daylight you know you only see them a couple times in daylight so i hunted you know i hunted you know probably 40 or 50 days um and you know without truck camera pictures just waiting on them to come but um you know i wouldn't wouldn't take those days back uh like i said i could have waited on the trail camera picture like i said i shot them the next day but i don't think it's uh i just like the time in the woods you learn so much when you're in the woods so, you, yeah you learn more in the stand than you do from pictures i personally think absolutely what do you score um, this year I haven't had him officially scored. When I scored him, when he, when I first got him, he was 183. Um, you know, I don't know, it maybe shrunk a little bit, but uh, yeah, he was 183 when I scored him, uh, right after I shot him. And then these are just some other deer. This, this deer I shot um, four years ago. I think it was four years ago? Um, three or four years ago. And this was actually a deer I was not targeting. Um, I got a, I did not have a deer that year that I was hunting. I, uh, I couldn't get on a big one and I ended up with a new piece of property and I went in and uh, actually my first day uh, he came in and, and I shot him. See guys, it's that easy. You just gotta sit once and you get a freaking giant deer like well, this. You I mean, in my defense, the first sit is always the best sit. Like, you know, you're putting the less, you know, the least amount of sin in there, like, you know, the pressure, you know, I didn't even scout the area. So I just went in and I got lucky on this one, but it was rut. Did you get him scored? Uh, no, I didn't officially score him, but he was uh, 167 um, by my tape. Gotcha. Um, and then, so China was here. Just, just out of curiosity, how how close are you normally with your own tape to the official score? Well, I was um, 13 or 14 inches under on Ed. Like I scored Ed at like 170 something. That's a hard deer to score though. Yeah, it was a really hard deer to score. Yeah, I wouldn't know where to start. I'm, I'm usually like usually by like looking at it, just by looking at a deer without scoring them, I can usually tell within five to eight inches. And usually when I score them, I'm within a couple inches, you know, from from real score. Um, you obviously watched our how to score a white tail. Yeah, right. Yes, that's exactly how I learned. <laughs> yeah, this deer, actually there's a pretty cool story on this deer. I, I did shoot him during rut. Um, I liked a midday hunt um, and I actually had this deer in on me um, midday. Um, he came in and bedded down facing me at a tree, 30 yards. He came in, I couldn't sh get a shot at him because um, he came straight in and then he bedded down. He came in with a doe, like I said it was during rut. Um, the doe went milled off, she was messing around and he just sat down and bedded right in front of me, looking straight at the tree I was in. So I could not move. He was only 30 yards from me and he laid there for probably uh, an hour. He would uh, put his head flat on the ground. I've never seen a, like a mature, mature deer bed. Um, he would put his head flat on the ground. He never shut his eyes. Like very rarely were his eyes ever shut. He put his head flat on the ground and he'd bring his head up like he would do that. He probably did that 10 times during that hour. And then he got up and walked straight towards me, pretty much hit the tree I was in and started walking away. And I still didn't have a good shot. So I shot him while he was walking away. I thought I could have a, a good quartering um, away shot. And it, the, it, the broad head just kind of bounced off his rib cage. Um, so I was super sad that day and he ran off. Well, I ended up hunting same area, different tree. Uh, the next week and he comes back in miss same thing midday I'm sitting over this bedding area where these does usually bed um, and he came in midday downwind of this bedding area like uh, I sat downwind of the bedding area because I figured some bucks might come downwind of this known bedding area there's all kinds of does that bed in here well he did he came he was walking midday figured these does would be bedded down and uh, instead of the does he, he ended up catching an arrow but uh, 
Well, you heard it here first, folks. Big mature deer sleep with their eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he never shut his eyes. You got this one officially scored. In... Yeah, 171. Uh, that was the net. That was uh, the net, yes. Okay. So this buck right here, um, I shot this one while I was building the house. Um, actually, the first time we seen him was running through the bean field um, while we were framing up the house. I'm like, that looks like a pretty good deer. So we put a truck hammer up behind the house and uh, yeah, yeah, we uh, ended up shooting him with a nail gun. Bruh. <laughs> so there's a fair amount of luck with some of these yeah. bucks for yeah. sure. So he dropped his tool belt, yeah, uh, dropped his, belt. Release, he, his handy dandy release, he's yeah. always got his back pocket. So anyway, um, I put some trail cameras up, I already had some back there, and uh, he ended up showing up on trail camera a couple times, and uh, I ended up going and hunting him one day when we got done working on the house, it was a rut, he came in with a couple little does and uh, got busted. I think so you can definitely story, tell that man. that was rough because if you look at his neck, I was going to mention something after, but his he's neck and fat his, boy. his neck and his like face is like, he's either, he probably was mature, obviously. Oh yeah, he's um, a big deer. But, um, probably one of the bigger body deer I've ever shot. Yeah, I can, I can see that just I, in the mount. He was the biggest body deer I'd ever shot. 500 pounds, right? Yeah, maybe more. So this deer is the deer we call Trump. Okay. This is probably one of my more favorite deer. I mean, they're all, they, I, I love them all. This, this deer, um, I was hunting him on rumors um, of a big deer that was around this area um, that I was hunting and I never got a trail camera picture of him, never nothing, but um, I still hunted him and anyway, I ended up seeing him from the road one day after season. I saw him, I'm like, that's where he's at. So I, I just kind of, I would drive by there every day and he was out here eating in this grass, little grass, someone's backyard almost um, he was eating and I drove by every day and I, I drove by until I saw him out there with no antlers uh, so I went in and uh, and shed hunted and found one side uh, of it I, I literally looked for another two weeks from the other side and couldn't find the other side yeah. and uh, thing is a weapon yeah <laughs> so the next year that was my target deer and uh, I hunted him I, I had a bunch of pictures of him in velvet and um, there was actually a couple of other big ones running around with him uh, in velvet, but once they hit Hardhorn, he left, and I never saw him again um, up until rut. Uh, he came back during the rut, and he was injured. Um, he had gotten a fight with another buck. There was another buck in the area that had really long, sharp tines, and it had its eye gored out. So I'm pretty sure him and that, that this other deer got in got into it pretty good, like almost to the death, and it stabbed him through his brisket, um, he had gangrene and everything all up in his brisket. Um, like I said, the other deer had his eye gouged out, but he came back to his core area, which I was in his core area. Um, and it was the end of the rut. He came back and he was still like kind of, wasn't chasing does, but he was walking around, um, you know, after, after some does, but I don't know if he would have made it or not, but you know, the meat was no good. Um, you know, after I, I shot him, I, I made a 60 yard shot on him and uh, he died within 30 yards. I double lunged him. And uh, yeah, we hit, you could see just like, when we took him to the processor, the processor said like, man, he, it was not good. Like everything was bad. So I don't know how long he would have made it, um, but he probably would have got shot during gun season that year anyway, being, sure. being that injured. Um, it was a highly gun hunted area. So I was, I was super happy to get him. Like I hunted him really hard. Probably the second hardest deer um, I've ever hunted compared to Seltar. Which we'll get into right now. So are all these bucks bow? Every buck is bow, correct. And every, that is impressive. That is something that not everyone, that not every hunter can say. Yep, and every buck is Ohio and every buck is within, I would say 15 to 20 miles um, from crow flies of the way of this house. So they're that all awesome. within fairly close and a lot of them are within a mile from my house. So his address is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good luck trying to find them. Yeah. Uh, so th this deer right here, this is a deer I called cell tower. Um, yeah, you have to scoot way back there and get all of yeah. deer in the same frame. And it's, it's kind of crazy, you know, I called him cell tower because he's one of the first deer I ever got when I was using a cell camera. Um, and he just freaking his big 
freaking looks like a cell tower. <laughs> but anyway, I, mean, I can see why you need it. I can definitely see. Yeah, it. so it's kind of fitting. Um, but I, I did. I got pictures of him the year before this, and then so I started hunting this deer, and found out there was another guy hunting this deer. Um, found out there was a bunch of people hunting this deer. Like this deer, once I started hunting him and uh, kind of got more known in this area, this deer traveled so much. Like this deer was not uh, a homebody deer. This deer covered some miles. Um, and it was crazy, like when, like I got trail camera pictures of him for three years and during season, like right when season opened, like the day season opened, he'd come to my property. Like he would be on another piece of property all summer um, with a bunch of hunters. They'd all have pictures of him. And then like with usually the day of season, he he's on my property and he stays doesn't stay in that area but he that becomes his core area for hunting season um, and he kind of stays around there and I don't know really what he does for rut because during rut he would come back it was, he was almost like on a junket like every seven days I would get a picture of him well uh, November no October um, he came in during daylight there was like 10 minutes of daylight left I wasn't in the tree stand I was mowing the field actually I was brush hogging the field that I have this per, per permission to hunt. I was brush hogging the field and uh, he's at my trail camera that's 70 yards away from my brush hogging and it's daylight. You know, I get a cell cam pick and I'm in the freaking tractor and he's there. So I'm like, okay, every seven days he usually does the same thing. So seven days later, I had a good wind. I sat in that stand. It was the end of October. He comes in, does the same thing. He, like there's like maybe 10 minutes of daylight left. He comes in. And this place I'm hunting, I never hunt corn piles um, because like big deer, like they know, like they know a corn pile is, you know, it's not normal. Like they will come to them, but usually it's after dark. Uh, but this spot where I'm hunting, like it's not like a funnel or anything. So this little piece of property I hunt, like I have to bring the deer in. Like there's no reason for them to come in. And so I do run a corn pile there. So he came into this corn pile um, and it, where I have the corn pile, I think they feel really safe, but the wind was really good. He comes into it. Um, it's about a 60 yard shot from where the tree I'm in to the corn pile. Um, I like staying pretty far away from, from the corn piles and there's no possible way he could get downwind of, the, of me. So anyway, he comes in and I shoot, I make the shot right when I shoot, he, he turns into me and the broadhead hits his shoulder and bounces off bounces off of him back towards me it was the craziest thing i've ever seen in my life like i'm like are you serious like the broadhead literally hit him and bounced back towards me and he runs away he said no you will not kill me into yeah. right now like i've never not today any, like it didn't penetrate it, it it literally bent it was a rage and it bent the tip like it bent the tip down and bounced towards me like uh like i've never seen anything like it before i'm like at least got deer probably gone forever. The next night I have him on truck camera again. Like, <laughs> didn't face him. Didn't face him one bit. But he was standing, there was another deer in too. So I don't know if he thought the other deer hit him or something. There was another deer on the corn pile at the mm. same time. So I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, he had a, a like a seven inch kicker coming off the back here uh, when I shot him the first time. Well, I ended up killing him late season. He came in late season and I killed him late season. Um, pretty sure it was in December sometime and during the rut he had broke off about seven inches of rack and he scored 185 so he'd have been Jeez. been in the 190s um what's the inside spread I'm yeah. sure everybody was skipping ahead trying yeah. to figure out what the inside spread is 26 inch inside spread that's insane yeah yep that is insane yeah everyone's like yeah my that that deer I have on camera has that I'm like no it doesn't no yeah, yeah. He no, 23 no it doesn't I'm like all right no it yeah. doesn't let's, let's talk about this and then I guess you might as well talk about this one over here. So, so this deer um, is should be my second 200 inch, should be my first 200 inch deer, but I should have two 200 inch deers. Ed should be 200 inches, but you know, with Ed only having three points on one side, it makes it hard. But <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this deer ended up scoring over 200 inches. I actually really hunted hard for this deer. Uh, I actually, when I was hunting him, I forgot my tree stand that day. So I had to stand in a tree that had a bunch of forks coming out of it. and. Uh, it was late season. I, I usually really like hunting late season. Uh, it was December, but it was actually a fairly warmer day uh, for December. So I switched my coat and stuff and I 
didn't have like the grunt calls and everything I usually have late season and uh, I saw some deer off in the distance and I just kind of gave like a little mouth grunt and this deer stood up out of the CRP that was right in front of me and walked right towards me. And I'd already missed the deer that year because I drew back and when I shot at the deer, um, I'm pretty sure I didn't look through my peep. Like I just kind of came back and, and touched off and uh, when this deer came in, I was always thinking, well, make sure you look through your peep, make sure you look through your peep. And uh, you know, it, it's one thing to get a big deer to come in it's another thing to kill it when it comes in. 100%. Like, like, it's so hard to get a mature buck to come in, but another reason that they're, they stay big is because, yes, people do get shots at them, but a lot of people miss because a deer like that comes in, they're shaking, mm -hmm. they don't know what to do, they make quick movements. Like, it's really tough, like, when a big mature deer comes in, like, to actually get it done. So what, what did he gross? Uh, 223, uh, netted 203. So he still netted over 200, yes. which is insane. Because it's like, I mean, I guess you, people would probably be uh, literal and say it's a mainframe seven, but I mean, really, it's a mainframe six point over 200 inches. That's, yep. I can't even imagine. I would feel bad for your score <laughs> after trying to <laughs> try and do that, but that's insane. Yeah. But that's uh, that's all of them. Yeah, I mean you've seen all my deer because I have them all here. So that is awesome. Yeah, that's all for now. Very now beautiful. I got to go find a, a prospect for next year. Yeah, crazy unique. Like that's by by far now my favorite buck is Ed. Five drop times. Yeah. All right. Yeah, five drop times. That's insane. Well, so they called one of the drops a main bee. Um, Even cooler. <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, I mean typically you get people who have like. This and I'm like, dude, look at this insane drop time that he has a freaking like 12 inch drop or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, he's got crazy drops. That deer's got such crazy character. It's unreal. I can't wait to get him on the walk. He's going right there. We'll move that picture and he's going right there. And that's that's cell tower, correct? Yeah. That's a freaking awesome picture. Shot on an iPhone 12. Yeah. What was that? How old was he then? Uh, I think he said two and a half or three and a half. Three and a half. For sure, he was three and a half here. Let your deer grow, folks. Yeah, let Literally. your deer grow. Let your deer grow. Yeah. We're in Ohio. Yeah. The deer can get this big. But then you go and you look at Ed and see Ed sheds when he was three and a half. When Ed was three and a half, he was 160. Most people would, 98 to 99 percent of hunters, probably myself included, it would be very difficult not to shoot this deer. Yeah. This. So this is Ed at three and a half. And, He's got so much mass. And yeah, crazy mass. And he was um, 146 inches here with no inside spread. That's insane. Yeah, at as three. An, as an eight half, point. As an eight point at three and a half years old. So like, we pretty much knew this deer was probably gonna be, could be a 200 inch deer one day. Which, like I said, if he wouldn't have got hit by a car, he would have been 200 inches. 250. Yeah. All right, so let's not let's not stop short here. We're talking 250. This deer has been through it. Yeah, he's been, this deer has been through, he's been shot, hit by a car. Bro, 2020 was bad for us yeah, all, especially bad. this deer. It was very bad for Ed. I don't know if we can get <laughs> a big enough thumbnail, I and mean, we're gonna have to put the okay. camera way over there. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Week, cookies out. Well, I don't wanna block any of the deer, so I'll find crash down. I was gonna take a picture of yours. It's actually a video, I couldn't oh. figure out. <laughs> I didn't do the thing. Right, all right. Sweet man, dude. Evelyn. Yeah. One blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming out.